Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm a bit under the weather, so with your permission, I give my talk sitting. If you order me, I go stand. You can't talk to me now. I'm good? I, um, I was blessed in 1978 to study at Umu Korea University. And I had three teachers. Sheikh Jafar, Sheikh Idris from Sudan, he taught us uh, Aqidah. Muhammad Kutub, the brother of Said Kutub, wrote the book um, Islam, the Misunderstood Religion. He taught us Dawah. And my favorite teacher, Sheikh Hussein Hamid Hassan from Egypt, he taught us fiqh. Whenever I asked a question, he gave me typical three answers. He said, we have three opinions. Ahmed ibn Hanbu, this is his opinion, and this is the evidence that he gave. Imam Shafi'i has a different opinion. This is his opinion, and this is the evidence he gave. Imam Malik has a third opinion. That man can teach us thick. I can't do that. And wallahi, Sheikh Muhammad Ninawi, I said the same thing that what I'm going to talk about today that I think that you will benefit is love. And, 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 and I think that the ummah right now needs love. لا تدخلوا جنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحبوا you will never go to Jannah until you believe, and you will never believe until you love one another. How important is that? A few years ago, I was at Newark Airport, and I was at a terminal trying to determine how to get to my terminal. And a car came by and said, do you need help? I said, yes, I'm trying to get to such and such terminal. He said, get in the car. The first thing he said to me is, assalamu alaikum. And there was nothing about him to make me think he was Muslim. So my question to you, should I return the salams? Of course. He said to me, I am a Muslim from Saudi Arabia. And me and my wife have been married for years and never had children. Can you make dua for me? I said, of course. He will never know for two weeks straight. Every night I begged Allah for this man and his wife to have a baby. This man, there was nothing about him to make you think he was Muslim. His dress, nothing. No kufi, you don't need a kufi to be a Muslim. No bed, sunnah, no khamis. So my question to you, should I return the salams? Of course, I did. I went to Memphis, Tennessee, and maybe some brother heard about that. And he said to me, Imam Saraj, me and my wife been married and never have child, had children. Can you make dua? I did. Week or so. Came back the next year. That same brother came to me with a baby in his hand and put the baby in my arm and said, Imam Saraj, thank you for your dua. I went back to New York, 7-Eleven, owned by Muslims, the manager Muslim. Manager comes to me and said, Imam Saraj, me and my wife, I know, I, I know. <laughs> and he said, can you make dua? I said, yeah, I got this. <laughs> so, the next week, I said, anything yet? Said, no. I came back, anything yet? No. So for two weeks, I asked and I stopped. And I stopped for a while. And then one day I saw him, I said, anything? He said, yes, my wife is pregnant now. 
And when they had the baby, they took the picture of the baby and sent it to me. Now, I'm saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wonderful, wonderful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet والسلام, said, La tadukulu jannah hatta tu'minu wa la tu'minu hatta tahabu. You never go to Jannah until you believe, and you never believe until you love one another. My question is Do we love one another? I was in a city, in a conference, in a hotel, and a brother came to me and said, Imam Siraj, my mother-in-law is in the hospital. Can you make dua for her? I asked him how far the hotel, or the hospital from here. He said, not far. I said, let's go. He didn't ask me to come to the hospital. He said, make dua. I said, let's go to the hospital. And when we went to the hospital, she's in a coma, intensive care. And I made the dua to her, that, to Allah, that Allah would bless her to recover. I didn't know that they were taping me. They taped me. And then, about two months later, the brother called me and sent me a video that she made. Said, Imam Saraj, I want to let you know that when you made dua for me, I heard it. You never know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what am I saying today? Love one another. I'm going to close with something that will happen on Yom Al-Qiyamah. I asked one of the students, if you had one wish, what would you wish for? He said that me and my family go to Jannah. I said, I thought you would say that. The Prophet wasalam, said that Allah gave every prophet a special dua that would be answered. And he said, all of the prophets, they hurried to make their dua. He said, I saved mine for Yom al until Yom Al-Qiyamah to be a shafa'ah for my ummah, to be a shafa'ah for my ummah on Yom Al-Qiyamah. I'm going to make a couple of points. Ayat from Quran, a couple of hadith. Notice Allah mentioned Quran وَأَنزَلَتْ تَوْرَاةً فِيهَا هُدًى وَنُورٌ And we sent down the Torah in it as guidance and light and gave him, him who? Isa, al-Injil fihi hudan wa nur in it as guidance and light. Our, in, in Brooklyn, we have Masjid Dawood. In Queens, Masjid Isa ibn Maryam. In the Bronx, uh, Masjid Musa. Look at us. Look what we think about the, the Christians and the Jews. Listen how Allah puts it in, in the Quran. That's a message. Just like it was revealed to those who came before you. I'm saying all of this to ask the question, what does love have to do with it? I'm going to leave you with a, a scene that will take place on Yom al Qiyamah. You know, every once in a while, the people in Jannah can see the people in hell, and the people in hell can see the people in Jannah, and they can communicate. Let me give you one example from the Quran, one from Hadith. <laughs> Why are you in the hellfire? We're not those who used to make salat. What? Who are you? The Prophet went to the heavens and Allah ordered him to make 50 prayers a day for the job to be delicate. And I returned with it until I ran into Musa. And he said, what did Allah order you? 50 prayers a day, huh? Go back to your Lord. Your, your people won't be able to do that. And so the prophet, he goes back, and Allah reduces. And every time he goes to Musa, Musa says, go back. And he goes back until it's five. Five prayers a day. Who are you? Who 
are you? Allah ordered us to make prayer five times a day. Who are you? So let me end with something that's going to take place on Yom al Hadith. Muslims will look and see their brothers in the hellfire. Rabbana, ikhwanuna, kanu yusalluna ma'na. Oh Allah, our, our brothers, they, they used to pray with us. We sumuna ma'na, and they fasted with us. We tuhujuna ma'na, and they made hajj with us. You ought to ask the question right now. I feel like I want to stand up. No, I better sit down. They used to pray with us. There's a hint there. Pray in jama'ah. It's a hint. They used to fast with us. They, make, they made hajj with us. But the question is what happened? Two possibilities. Number one, they left the deen. How many of you know Muslims who stopped practicing the deen? Raise your hand. you'll find a lot of people that left the deen. But there's another possibility of these Muslims who used to pray and make hajj and they're in the hellfire. And I'm going to leave you with this. The Prophet asked the question to a sahaba, what is a muflis? What's a muflis? He said, a muflis is one that they don't have no, they have no money, they have nothing. He said, a muflis in my ummah will come on Yom al Qiyamah, bis salat and with zakat, and will, they will have zakat, and, and they will pray, and they fasted. That ain't the problem, they did it. But shatama hadha, they abused that person. They lied on that person. They stole the wealth of that person. And they beat that person. And they shed the blood of that person. Allah will take their good deeds, the Salat, Hajj, and give it to that person that they slandered. And if they run out of good deeds, Allah will take the bad deeds of that person and put it on that one and throw them in the hellfire. You serious? Be careful. What does love have to do with it? It's this. Allah will say to those Muslims, who were concerned about the Muslims in the hellfire. He said, go and take out of the hellfire those whom you recognize. Because we care. So I'm saying this, Allah blessed me in 1978 to become a Muslim. And Allah is my witness. I love the Muslims everywhere. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us as Muslims to love one another. And then I leave you with one request. I want you to get an encyclopedia or an almanac and I want you to look up this country called Yemen. And I want you to note two things. Number one, I want you to note the population of Yemen. 30 million, 31 million, 32 million, something like that. And then I want you to look at the percentage, the Muslim population in Yemen, and they will say something like 99.2% Muslims. Isn't that amazing? But in order to appreciate that, you've got to go back 1,400 years ago. I was in Detroit a few weeks ago, Masjid Wali Muhammad, one of the largest, uh, oldest masjids in, in, the, in Detroit. And they mentioned a masjid not far from them in Hamtramck, Masjid Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Mu'adh ibn Jabal, the Prophet, salam, sent him to Yemen 
and said, you're going to the people of the book, and you let the first thing that you invite them to is the oneness of Allah. And when they understand that, tell them they have to make prayer five times a day. And when they make prayer, tell them that they have to uh, give zakat. Now look at Yemen. Aisha radiallahu anha asked her husband, the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salat wa salam, Hala ta'alayka yawmin kenna shaddam in yawmin uhud? Has there been a day more difficult than uhud? Muslims lost the battle. Maybe 85 Muslims died. And what the Prophet, alayhi salat wa salam, said, a day more difficult than that? When he went to Taif. I was blessed in 1978, I visited Taif. He went there to do what? To give da'wah. He's a non-Muslim and he's preaching to them and they're throwing rocks at him and he's bleeding and he's run and they run him out of Taif and wiping the blood from his face and while he's doing that there's a shade over the sun. He looked up and behold the angel Jibril. And the angel Jibril said the law has heard and seen what your people have done for you and sent the angel of the mountains for you to order it, what, order him what to do. And the angel of the, of the, of the uh, mountain said to the Prophet, Allah has ordered me. You tell me what to do. And the Prophet said, no, no, I hope that from their loins will come those who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guess what? Taif now, predominantly Muslims. The vision of Muhammad alayhi salat wa salam and the concern. This is my challenge to you. Brothers and sisters, this is my challenge to you. How many of you born Muslim? Raise your hand. I want you to look around. How many, like me, converted to Islam? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. Okay, handful of people. My one complaint to the Ummah is that we don't go to the people. We don't. I was in the Nation of Islam, and shall I talk about that tomorrow? I was in an organization that called ourselves Muslims. We didn't call it Dawah, we called it fishing. But we went out to the people, me, myself, I quit my job to sell a 25 cent Muhammad Speaks newspaper. Thousands of doors I knocked on trying to invite the people to the deen. I'm saying that we got to do better. We have to go to the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless this conference, and may Allah help us to love one another. Assalamu alaikum.